Hi, I'm Molly Coonan. I am originally from Olivia, Minnesota, which is a little teeny tiny farm community. I grew up the second of four kids, the only girl. My parents were wonderful people. My grandparents lived really close to us. We had the trampoline and we had the basketball court and the extra lot. Like there was always something fun going on. I was coming back from my freshman year of college. I was 19 at the time and excited to see everybody. And I got to the house and it was empty. It was dark, it was quiet. I knew something was wrong. I didn't know what was wrong. So I walked through the house and I eventually found my dad in his room and he was sitting in the dark. And all he said to me was, go see your mom. So I walked to find my mom and she said, your brother Tim, who was two years younger than me, he was 17 at the time, a junior in high school, was diagnosed with what she called an inoperable brain tumor. It was rare, it was vicious. He was eventually given 18 to 24 months to live. They took him to the Philippines, they took him to Mexico in Western medicine when there was nothing left to do for him. They put him on special diet, shark cartilage, you name it. They just absolutely battled for his life. And for me being 19 years old, his death is inconceivable, especially a vibrant, young, funny, gorgeous, amazing kid. Like it's just inconceivable. My niece, Zoe, she started having similar symptoms where she had headaches, dizziness. She started to walk a little lopsided and we took her to Children's in Minneapolis, learned that she had what we now know is diffuse midline glioma. I immediately called Duke University for Tim's medical records, got them. I sent them to our doctors at Children's and sure enough, they had the exact same rare diagnosis of the same type of cancer. We know now more about the disease itself. We know that Tim didn't have a glioblastoma, he had a DMG. What's maddening is that the treatment protocol is exactly the same in 22 as it was in 1997. You poison kids with chemotherapy and radiation in the hopes of giving them a little bit of quality of life before they inevitably die. Tim had a couple of months, Zoe didn't have any. For me, it's really hard to watch my brother go through this again. This is our third time. I can't protect him. I can't protect his wife. I can't protect his daughter. I can't protect his sons. And walking in and out of that hospital every day, it just is, it's unfair. It's incomprehensible. It's, there's just gotta be a different way. There's gotta be something better. I thought after Zoe died, the least I could do was go back and volunteer at the hospital. When I went to do that, I met one of the leading scientists in rare pediatric brain cancer, and they're working on a vaccine that isn't like chemotherapy, it isn't like radiation. It actually restarts your immune system, so it doesn't have any of those terrible side effects, and your body basically fights cancer on its own. And that, to me, is much more hopeful. Being a pediatric oncologist, unfortunately, we have to give bad news frequently to families. And typically, when we give the bad news, then we can give the hope and say, okay, you were diagnosed with, you know, a high grade, you know, medulloblastoma. But look, we have this treatment that is going to give you 85, 90% chance of cure, which is oftentimes what I say about some types of tumors. With DMG, DIPGs, it's just a devastating disease. We have to tell families like Zoe's family that we have nothing that is effective for them and everything that we're doing is just meant to prolong their life. Unfortunately, what we found out is although chemotherapy is really good for many types of tumors, it's actually not as good for brain tumors because you need drugs that penetrate well into the brain. The brain is protected by something called the blood-brain barrier because we don't want toxins in our system to get to the brain and cause injury to the brain. But unfortunately, chemotherapy is a toxin we would like to get to the brain. And we just have a hard time getting many of the drugs 
into the brain and, or in appropriate quantities. And so we'd give all these drugs and the kids would be sick and then they didn't have any improvement in their survival. So we've actually kind of given up on their old chemotherapies because we've tried them all and we just haven't found a good one. So we're now moving into other types of treatments. We in particular are looking at using the immune system to try to attack the brain tumors. It involves doing vaccines using OX2 therapeutics. We give the vaccine to rev up the immune system and recognize the tumor as foreign. And then we give a single dose of radiation, which exposes the proteins on the surface of the tumor to make it more recognizable to the immune system. We're very hopeful that this is gonna work, but we have to test it out. We wanna confirm the dose and confirm the safety. And we're gonna to have to have probably around 12 to 18 patients enrolled on the study to get that answer. The next study will be the phase two study. And that is gonna be where we look at the effectiveness. And we already are writing that study and we're hoping to do it through an international consortium. And we're gonna to need to have probably about 40 patients to be able to get that answer. This is no longer about my family. This is about the families who are waiting in the trial. We have six kids in our trial right now. We have kids waiting for us. They don't have time to wait. They have a death sentence and they're literally waiting for dollars. And I'm on a mission to help figure that out. With research, we need funding because it's not proven. Insurance companies don't cover it. For one year of treatment, it's costing OX2 $40,000 per patient. And so we really need to have people support us to be able to determine, is this gonna be the cure or prolong the lives of these patients? The vaccine actually potentially has applicability to other types of cancers. It has potential for breast cancer. It has potential for other more common types of cancers please consider donating, please consider partnering with us, not just for these kids, but for the potential of other types of therapies for cancer that is not the traditional chemotherapy, radiation, poison. Our goal is to be able to cure all children with DMG. Maybe it will be the cure, but if not, it will be a stepping stone to get to that cure. If you have an extra dollar, I would really appreciate it if you went to the site just to learn a little bit more about us and to potentially donate to our cause.